Aloha Mai, um, Executive Director and Board Members. Um, the Office of Hawaiian Affairs appreciates this opportunity to testify on the revised proposed draft rules. Um, my name is Jocelyn Doan, and in addition to being a middle and high school graduate, <laughs> I'm a senior public policy advocate at OHA. Um, as everybody in this room likely knows, OHA is the constitutionally established body responsible for protecting and promoting the rights of Native Hawaiians and we have substantive obligations to protect the cultural and natural resources for our beneficiaries. Um, as a part of our broad kuyana, um, we're required to serve as the principal public state agency for monitoring the activities by the state agency, of other state agencies, um, other agencies, I'm sorry, that impact our beneficiaries, as well as advocate on behalf of our beneficiaries. So upon learning about Act 55, we endeavored to understand its legal implications and hired counsel, counsel and consulted with other attorneys that are experts in Native Hawaiian law. Um, these attorneys have um, extensive experience in litigation and public policy making on Hawaiian issues, particularly Native Hawaiian traditional and customary rights, and helped us to form the foundation of the recommendations we've made both legislatively and before you today. Um, OHA recognizes that with appropriate protections in place that the PLDC has the potential to facilitate the revenue that the DLNR so desperately needs. Um, we understand that the DLNR is the state agency with primary responsibility over the land and resources um, that are very important and critical aspects to our beneficiary's lives. So understanding such, in April, May, October, <laughs> um, September and October of this year, we submitted in writing specific amendments to the rules um, you have our written testimony in front of you today, which includes the uh, three formal letters, um, as well as today's, uh, the letter regarding today's um, hearing. Um, unfortunately, most of our suggestions were, um, and, and more importantly, our concerns, have not been addressed in the current draft of the rules. Um, by, all the suggestions are by no means the only way to address the concerns that we've raised, we've heard the public raise, and we've heard our beneficiaries raise. However, there's been little changes in the rules that would ensure transparency, due diligence, and accountability in PLDC projects, community input on proposals that are carried out by the PLDC, and provide minimum standard of information that the public will have so they can meaningfully participate, um, mandate consultation with applicable state, county, and federal agencies, including OHA, um, as well as local civic clubs, Hawaiian Homestead Associations, um, equal and transparent planning for all projects and culturally sensitive development projects. The aforementioned is um, a summary of our written comments, which I obviously won't read for you today. A little long, it'll take me longer than three minutes. <laughs> um, so we just wanted to, and I, I'm going to try to be as fast as possible, um, so I want to respect uh, everybody in the room who's come to testify. Um, as well as your time. So I wanted to re um, reiterate that the rules um, should reflect the POPC's Kuliana to Public Trust Assets, Native Hawaiian traditional and customary rights and the resources. Um, and a memo that was recently issued by the Legislative Reference Bureau confirms our concerns over POPC's exemptions and states that the projects are likely exempt from HRS 205, HRS 205A, as well as various county zoning. Failure to replace the planning tools embodied in the statute could result in decisions that, amongst other things, adversely impact Native Hawaiian traditional and customary practices, degrade natural and cultural resources, and adversely impact historically significant sites. I'm going to very briefly focus um, our testimony on suggestions to assist the PLDC in fulfilling its statutory obligations to develop an appropriate and culturally sensitive land development program and mandate that the PLDC consult with all appropriate county, state, and federal agencies. Um, unfortunately, there continues to be little on the rules that assure cultural sensitivity to the unique challenges that our beneficiaries face. Um, amongst other things, we believe and reiterate that the guidelines should, for PLDC projects should ensure that there's no interference with traditional and customary practices, that are the environmental resources and cultural resources are not impacted, and that ensures consultation. Um, while we believe that the PLDC's statutory responsibilities require that the corporation um, incorporate cultural considerations throughout the entire planning process, the definition of culturally sensitive is only referred into the, in the administrative rules one time, um, and the remaining rules, uh, and that's in section 23. 
Um, the remaining rules uh, fail to give cultural sensitivity its statutory authority and instead expressly allow projects that may not be culturally sensitive. If we look at section 22 of chapter 302, it describes an eligible project as one that helps preserve culture, agriculture, conservation, or preservation, which would allow projects to move forward that may not be culturally sensitive. And finally, um, OHA reiterates that the PLDC should mandate consultation with all applicable counties, um, county, state, and federal agencies. This is particularly important because of the PLDC's exemption. Um, the oversight agencies, really, um, for Chapter 205 and 205A, for example, so state and county agencies, they have objective oversight, specialized expertise, and experience. And um, when they grant permission, either through a permit or a boundary amendment, for example, they do it on a case-by-case -case basis after making a specific finding. Um, so while these agencies have this particular kuleana and expertise, um, you know, if the, if the projects are exempt from those laws, the rules don't replace them with anything else when you think about these concerns. So, again, in conclusion, OHA urges the PLDC to adopt OHA's suggested amendment, or, as always, we've been open to sitting down together and working on how the rules ensure respect and protection for Native language. Uh -huh.